Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video and today I want to talk about the emotional dumping parent and how this impacts a fearful avoidant attachment style. And I'm really looking at this as sort of like a cause and effect specifically in this video. So I'm not, you know, necessarily saying, you know, as this individual is older, I'm sort of talking about like why and a fearful avoidant with a parent who emotionally dumps on them is likely to probably have been a fearful avoidant in the first place, or at least will have FA tendencies. And we're going to talk about the impact of these behaviors from parent to child. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the concepts of remothering or refathering this part of ourselves, because reparenting is such a profound and important experience that we will need to fill up any holes or any moments of lack that we had in our lives around needs, around um, components that we just have to have in order to grow into healthy, thriving adults. So we do have a, a really in-depth reparenting course inside of the school, and um, we are still doing our sale to support everybody right now. So the coupon code for 25% off of um, membership bundles, so three months, six months, 12 months. We also have lifetime memberships available that are coming to an end very soon, or at least the huge discount rate that we launched them with is coming to an end soon. Um, and both of those links I'll put in the description box below. The coupon code is with you, all one word, and I'll put a card in this video as well. Um, so, so let's talk about this concept. This is a very important concept. And this sort of goes hand in hand with things like parentification, codependency, enmeshment, things that I talk quite a bit about on this channel. So you're welcome to check out other videos. I'll put some links for those in, in the description below as well. But what I really want to show here is the importance of recognizing if you have a parent or parents who emotionally dump on a child, so what this means is like share all their emotional problems, um, you know, tell the, the child the, the dynamics or challenges that are happening in the household. And I know that this is a very common experience for many FAs. This can be a common experience as well. I would say not very common, but somewhat common for anxious, preoccupied and dismissive avoidance. And this is how we get our enmeshed dismissive avoidance as we discuss the different types of DAs. What this creates is a one-way emotional connection. And what happens to the child who comes from this household is if you are so be busy being there for that parent or parents, then you aren't getting a chance to express your own feelings and needs. So you're receiving expression, it's getting modeled to you to a certain degree, but you're not getting the opportunity to even feel your own feelings, express your own feelings, be seen and heard for your experiences. And usually you are taught as a byproduct of this that, okay, I earn my worth in the world for being there for others, for doing what I can do for others, for showing up for other people. And so not only will this create dynamics of enmeshment, of course, because a large part of what enmeshment is, is a lack of emotional boundaries being expressed between two individuals. And obviously if one parent is emotionally dumping on their child or both parents, then what you have is a lack of emotional boundaries. So not only will this create um, those sorts of dynamics, but it will also create codependent patterns where you know indirectly this parent teaches the child that you are emotionally responsible for other people's feelings and needs and behaviors and you do have to step in even when you feel uncomfortable and outside of your comfort zone as a whole this is the role that you're being put in and so often in some ways you know these these individuals who experience this a lot from a young age will be quite um like emotionally wise in a lot of ways usually this individual grows up to like be hyper aware of human behavior and interactions and all these different things because anything that you're getting repetitively um you know, shown or modeled, usually our brain starts to like, this is how memory forms. Our brain starts to sort of build patterns and recognize patterns and link new things to old things that we already know. And so if you have a lot of that happening, then sometimes you have this like sort of built out foundation for recognizing human behavior and patterns in other people. But the downside of that is that a lot of the core wounds that will come out of this are things like, I am naturally unworthy because I don't get to, ex you know, my feelings and needs aren't being held space for and I have to earn that all the time or you know I get diminished and there's there is emotional neglect inherent in having a parent who emotionally dumps because of the fact that you know if a parent is needing you for that then they're not making space for your feelings and needs they're not you know seeing hearing understanding being present with you and just that is what emotional neglect is made up of and so this one-way emotional connection you know I just want to highlight in, in this video because 
We talk a lot about emotional neglect for the dismissive avoidant, but this is something that's really important for the fearful avoidant to recognize as well. And so we can have, you know, parentification where you feel like, oh my goodness, I, I'm responsible for the parents. Um, that can come from a number of different forms, not just emotional dumping or emotional neglect. Um, but sometimes this can create this large need to create extra space from people because the fearful avoidant or child who experiences this naturally will associate that their relationships to other people are about earning their worth, being there for people, one-way emotional co connection. And so unless this pattern is recognized and reprogrammed and corrected, what can often take place is this individual grows up in their adult life to assume that relationships are about one-way emotional connection because that's their subconscious comfort zone in regards to what they learned relationships were about in the first place. And so, you know, all these associations are built in and then they can associate, wow, I really want connection. I love connection, but it's so draining at the same time. And if you experience that in your life, that is a symptom of being out of equilibrium in your ability to give and exchange across all types of boundaries in relationships, that being emotional boundaries, time boundaries, mental or thought opinion-based boundaries, um, and then obviously like physical material and sexual boundaries can, can be impacted as a byproduct of that as well. So one other thing you should notice about this happening before we talk about the actual reparenting components or remothering, refathering is that sometimes when you're in this situation with a parent, what this does as well is it sort of dislodges you from your own experience of like how this interaction or dynamic is making you feel because we can't actually be hyper-focused on somebody else and ourselves at the same time. It's impossible to be both simultaneously. We can shift back and forth really quickly and that's a skill that you will have to learn in order to correct this pattern and that's how you'll return back to like healthy energetic exchange and an emotional ch exchange and, and thought exchange. But, um, and that will come up a lot, like if you ever dive into the boundaries course or the reparenting course or the codependency and enmeshment course, we talk a lot about all of those there. And a big component of that or theme within that is learning to take yourself into proper consideration. But um, until that's a new normal, then you'll go into relationship dynamics being hyper-focused on others. And those will feel draining because you're a little bit disconnected from yourself. You're a little bit out of relationship to self. Um, and this can also create a lot of behaviors around experiencing a lot of excessive guilt or shame, terror around making a mistake and hurting somebody else's feelings. Because if you take on this hyper responsibility to begin with, the idea of hurting somebody else's feelings is like a very painful thing for all the guilt you would feel largely because of all the pain you saw in others and all the programmed associations that came with probably in your childhood. So what do we do about this? Well, remothering or refathering are, you know, types of reparenting that I love to touch to chat about and we'll be addressing a lot more on this channel in the future. But, you know, remothering is like you looking at, you know, who was the parent who did this? Was it mother? Was it father? Was it both? And it doesn't just apply to emotional dumping, but what you can look at is what were the qualities that I needed instead from my mother in those times of emotional dumping? And what phrases did I need her to say? How did I need her to treat me? How did I need her to respect my boundaries? What did I need to be seen, heard, or understood about my experience? What boundaries did I need her to respect? What questions did I need her to ask me? What words of affirmation would have really been beneficial at that time? And you can do, do sort of a full spectrum, like what emotions did I need her to validate? You can really do a full spectrum check in with those questions and write them all out. You know, how, what affection do I need to receive? Do I need a hug? So take a big, hard look. And then your job is to start giving those things to yourself and just sort of play that role with your conscious mind towards those subconscious wounded aspects where you were originally imprinted by those, what I would describe as traumatic events, even though they aren't necessarily, you know, 10 out of 10 trauma, they have a traumatic impact on our subconscious mind and programming. And so this is really important. And when you look at that from a father perspective, if this was your father who did this, then in that case, same thing, you know, and you can check in with your love languages too. Like what acts of service did I need? Physical affection, words of affirmation, what quality time and what did I need that quality time to look like? Would gifts have helped? Like check in with your love languages, check in with those original questions I described with, with mother. Um, and you know, what did I really need and how can I start giving these things to myself? And the reason we have to do this is because we don't do well with a lack or a void. 
we have to be responsible in our adult lives for filling those voids if we want to have healthy attachment dynamics in our relationships in the future. So I will talk a lot more about the ideas and concepts of remothering and refathering in the future. And, and I'll put some um, content out in terms of how they, re they relate to different and specific attachment styles. And hopefully this will be very beneficial for you. And we do have a lot of content in depth with workbooks inside of the school around reparenting, boundaries, enmeshment, all these different things that I highly recommend checking out further. So thank you so much for being here and for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're getting a lot of value out of this channel and I will see you in the next video.